on that happy note, on that cheery note, let's go ahead and move on to the story of Bloody Mary. Now, I started talking about Bloody Mary a bit yesterday because I forgot what topic I was covering. But let me go over that again briefly. You know, Bloody Mary, I think I have a... I don't necessarily have a love-hate relationship with her. I think it's more of like a love-scare relationship with her. I think depictions of Bloody Mary in movies, she's always kind of hot, actually. Now, I'm talking about, like, Urban Legends Bloody Mary, that movie, where she's obviously, like, in... She died in college. I'm not talking about the stories where she's, like, a creepy little girl like Samara, but I don't know. They've always depicted her as kind of like this edgy goth teen hanging out in your bathroom. I can almost imagine... I can smell the clove cigarettes while I'm in there. Like, just some sort of, like, edgy chick, which I've always been kind of into. But... And maybe that's why I get that. Maybe it's from my fascination with Bloody Mary. I've personally never done Bloody Mary, just like I've never used the Ouija board. The last thing I want, the last room I want haunted in my house is my bathroom. That is where I go to kind of chill. And it's funny, even though I live by myself, bathroom is a very relaxing spot. When you live with someone else, the bathroom is the most relaxing spot in the house. But even when I'm by myself, like the bathroom's very relaxing. That's the last place I want haunted. One, for that, because I want to be able to chill out of my bathroom. Two, the last place I want a ghost to get me is in a shower, where I basically no longer have the ability to fight. I can fight in every room in my house, except a shower, because it's all wet and slimy. Well, probably shouldn't be slimy if I washed it more often, but you know, it's wet. Anyone can beat you up in a shower. I don't care who you are. Okay, maybe that guy from Eastern Promises could hold his own in a shower, but I wouldn't be able to. I'd much rather have a ghost attack me. Here's the rooms that I want to get attacked by ghosts in. A living room would be cool because I'm fairly familiar with it and it's surrounded by weapons. I got something, I got like a box knife to my right there. I have a club down to my left and I see an umbrella in the corner and I have a whole wall of sticks and clubs and baseball bats by the door because self-defense. So I'm pretty cool in my living room. My bedroom, I don't have a big problem with fighting ghosts in my bedroom, but I would hate to be sleeping and a ghost start messing with me because then it's going to be able to get in that first strike. Like, at least in a living room, I'd start to see stuff levitate towards me or light bulbs go out and stuff like that, and I'd be like, it's here. And then I could start grabbing my weapons and start flailing at nothing, hoping to hit something. And then in the bedroom, it would suck, though, because it's pretty much going to get first blow. Usually when I'm in the bedroom, the light's off. So it's going to have an advantage to the dark. I've thought a lot about this, you can tell. I wouldn't want to fight a ghost in my kitchen only because if a ghost can turn lights on and off and turn faucets on and off, it would make sense that it would be able to turn the stove on and off. So it could just turn the stove on when I'm not looking, when I'm washing my dishes. And then it just punched me once and I fall on the grill. And I'm like, ah, ah. I mean, again, like, A ghost could push me over in my living room and I'm pretty good. Maybe it could levitate like a knife to come after me. But I think I'd be pretty, pretty well able to like block a knife. A flying knife through a ghost. Not saying like Chuck Norris with a knife, but I would see it coming. Unless I guess it was floating behind me. But I think I'd hear like a ooh, it was coming through the air. But if it just turned on my stove, or what if I didn't know my stove was on and I go... I just lean on my stove like an idiot. I I put my hand down. I put a can of that, you know, that that spray you put on, what's that stuff called? The grease? I have this butter-flavored grease I spray my frying pan with so stuff doesn't stick to it. I stuck that can on a grill on my stove the other day. And I go, that is probably the dumbest thing I could have done. Like, anything could have accidentally happened. I could have turned this on and blown up. But anyways, we don't want to fight a ghost in my kitchen. Definitely don't want to fight a ghost in my bathroom. That's a long about way of saying that's one of the reasons why I've never done Bloody Mary. Oh, basement would be terrifying to fight a ghost in too. But luckily, I don't have a basement. Because they would just grab you as you're walking down the stairs. Just hand would come out. And again, first strike. You want to have first strike when you fight a ghost is what I'm saying. But anyways, don't want to haunt my bathroom. The story of Bloody Mary, it's funny because nobody knows where this legend comes from. It kind of just popped up in the consciousness of America, and it's fairly worldwide at this point. But the farthest they can really trace it back is the 1950s. Now, before that, there was a... They think that it was related to an old parlor game, which is a way that a young woman could tell who she was going to get married to, or if she's going to get married at all. This was an old game. This is hilarious. This is an old game from the early 1900s. So it it would make sense that if it started off in, say, 1910, by 1950s, it had evolved to Bloody Mary. The 1900s, they would tell a young girl, hey, you want to know who you're going to marry? And they're like, oh, yes, I do, I do, I do. 
Okay, so you have to walk up a flight of stairs backwards. Okay, that's doable. In the dark, holding a candle and a mirror. I, I think the end result of the game is it's Darwinian. That any girl who's dumb enough to do this game doesn't pass on her genes to other people. Because walking up the stairs backwards in the dark is hard enough. Carrying open flame, not a good idea while you're doing it. But they say if you walk backwards up a staircase holding a candle in the dark and look in the mirror, you'll see one of two things. Either a man will appear behind you and you'll be like, my true love. Oh, my heart's a flutter. Or you see a skull behind you. And that means you will die before you find your husband. And then I'm assuming shortly after that, you just fall down the stairs and catch on fire. So that was an old game that was played. Mirrors have had a long history of being used in fortune telling. There's been superstitions with mirrors. Obviously, break a mirror, seven years bad luck. But you're supposed to cover up mirrors in the presence of dead people so their souls don't get trapped in the mirror, things like that. But from that old superstition about walking backwards up the stairs, we don't really see any evolution of it, even if it's even connected. What we see is the story of Bloody Mary popping up in the 1950s. For those of you who are unfamiliar with it, for those of you who are four years old and never heard the story of Bloody Mary, tons of origins, but these are pretty much the basics. You go into a darkened bathroom, have a candle, or not, but the candle helps with the actual illusion. We'll talk about the science in a second. But anyways, if you go into a dark bathroom with the light off and you say, before I say this, I hope you're not listening to this podcast in your bathroom with the light off. Just just put it out there. If you're in the bathroom with your light off and you say, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. You will see Bloody Mary standing in your mirror. So now she's looking at you from the mirror. Now, there are a lot of variables. That's kind of the basic overview. There is a lot of variables. Sometimes you say it three times. She appears behind you. So you are looking at your reflection in the mirror and you don't see her in the mirror. You see her standing behind you. Sometimes she comes out of the mirror. Sometimes she attacks you, claws your eyes out, mutilates you, or you simply vanish. These are all variations of it. Sometimes she possesses you. Sometimes she replaces you, which I don't know if there's much of a difference there. I that would I think... And Bloody Mary really is a game for young girls. You do see guys play it from time to time, but it really is a game for young girls. And I think it's because it, I I believe it did come from the original walking up the stairs backwards game. And I think that it's primarily a game that girls play. And that's why some of the stuff plays into things like it possesses you, replaces you. If I got possessed by Bloody Mary, she would be sorely disappointed with her life. She's like, I went from an eternal realm of malevolence to this. And she's like, like, damn it, she's like cleaning up my apartment. She's scrubbing my dishes. She's like, Jason said he washed his dishes on his podcast. He doesn't wash his dishes. She's like, oh my God, he sleeps in this bed. She would be sorely disappointed. And if she replaced me, that would be even more bizarre because then she would come out of the mirror as me. Like I figure possess me, she goes into my body, but... Is it like a shallow howl thing where if she comes out of the mirror, does she, is my body gone and she's people see her as me? Again, she'd be sorely disappointed. This, These are the different variations of the story. And there's also different ways you can summon her. You can say Bloody Mary three times or sometimes you have to say it 12 times, which I would just get bored at that point. I'd be like, ah, Bloody Mary. You can say, I killed your baby, Bloody Mary. Ooh, that's a little harsh. That's a little rough. That's a, that's that's uh, I didn't hear that version until I researched this story. I killed your baby, Bloody Mary. Ugh. That's 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 like telling a yo mama joke to a cryptid. Like that's really deep. Or here's an odd version. There was and it's funny actually. I think this is retconned because they don't know how old the Bloody Mary story is, but apparently back in 1787, there was a Scottish poet named Robert Burns who mentioned Bloody Mary. So the history is real wonky on this. He says you can summon her by holding a candle, looking in a mirror and eating an apple. So that's weird. Like why an apple? I I mean, I guess in all of it's bizarre, all of it's bizarre, but it's such a like, to me, that's a, such a weird detail, and the fact that this Scottish poet was doing this, probably like, gee, that seems like, and it's funny because, I've talked about this before, with rituals, 
How did they figure out it was th- what phrase to say three times or 12 times or whatever? How you couldn't accidentally say, ah, oh, bloody Mary, oh, bloody Mary, oh, bloody Mary. And then bl- you, it wouldn't be something you discover on accident. And a ritual would have, like, you. what if you only said it one time? What if you only said it two times? I can imagine somebody accidentally eating an apple with a candle in front of a mirror. I think that is something that was probably quite common back in the day. I could see someone accidentally walking into a dark bathroom in 1787 going, where did I put my, f- not my cell phone, because I don't know the deal. Where did I put my leather-bound book? And then he takes a bite out of an apple in the bathroom, and he looks up, and there's a girl. I could see that accidentally happening. But I don't think anyone has ever accidentally walked into a bathroom going, I killed your baby, Bloody Mary, and then a ghost popped out. So I, that's why I'm always a little suspicious of rituals. But that's another way you can do it, apparently. Have a candle, eat an apple in a dark bathroom. Some people say that Bloody Mary is based on uh, Mary the I, who killed a bunch of Protestants, and, interestingly enough, she lost a lot of children, and they think that's why the I killed your baby, Bloody Mary, is a reference to her specifically. Some people believe it refers to Elizabeth Bathory, the known as the Queen of Blood, who sacrificed a bunch of uh, supposedly sacrificed a bunch of virgins and bathed in their blood and stuff like that. She believed it would make her e- eternally young. We'll probably do another story on that, but she's fairly well known. They made a movie about her starring Freaky Muniz, so it's like I don't know if I'm going to cover that, but she's one of the origins supposedly of. Bloody Mary. The other one is a woman named Mary Worth, which depending on which legend you're, you hear, she was either a witch killed at the Salem Witch Trial or the version that I always heard of Bloody Mary. So the, the, we've kind of talked about all this stuff. The version I heard of Bloody Mary was this. There was a young woman who was super vain growing up. She was basically one of the plastics. She was the hottest chick in town. She's super vain, but she suffers some sort of horrible accident. I think it had something to do with a ghost turning on her stove and she fell on it. But she suffers some sort of horrible accident. Her loved ones wouldn't let her see her newly disfigured face because they knew she would go into shock. So they covered up all of the mirrors in the house. But curiosity got the best of her and apparently she just couldn't feel her lumpy, deformed face. Curiosity got the best of her one night when everyone was asleep. She walked, this, again, this is what I heard as a kid. She walked into one of the rooms and not just any room, a bathroom with a mirror. And she took the cover off and she saw her hideous face. And then she jumped into the mirror. This story terrified me as a kid, by the way. She jumped into the mirror and she vowed to uh, kill anyone who ever mentioned her name or something like that like i remember i think i first heard the story of bloody mary when i was like six and it terrified me but again i was like oh she's kind of hot like not the disfigured part but and i always terrified me it was a very big game growing up when i was a kid in the 80s that there was this girl in the mirror that if you went in the bathroom and said bloody mary three times she would uh, the version story i heard was she would come out and she would claw your eyes out for looking at her there was a story that i always heard growing up So I never did it. I had a bunch of friends do it and stuff like that. Totally terrified me. And a lot of times when they tell that story, the girl in that story's name is Mary Worth. Now, it is a true urban legend. It seems like every neighborhood has their own version of this story. How it works, who to call, not how it works, how to call her, what she does to you. But there are the, there are certain elements that are always the same. One, it's always a young woman. It's always a girl. It's never a man I, other than Candyman, which she when it was, that's fake. I, not like Bloody Mary's real. Well, she might be, but it's always a young woman. There's always a mirror involved. Those are, seem to be the two elements that are always the same in America, because we're going to go to another example here, and then I'm going to wrap this all up. I know this sounds really rambly, but there is a hypothesis that the nerds have put out. The, you know, nerds just can't let anything just be weird and wacky. A bunch of nerds got together and they said there has to be a psychological reason why Bloody Mary is so prevalent in American society. They said as they smoked their pipes, not noticing the smell of clove smoke coming from their bathroom as Bloody Mary can't wait to hear what they have to say. They say bathroom is a pl- this is I'm not making this up. I re- came across this a couple different times in my research. The bathroom is a place where a lot of girls have periods and the blood is mysterious and it's this time of transition, and they're scared 
and it means they're becoming an adult, and that is why Bloody Mary takes place in bathrooms and involves blood. Like, thanks, okay, nerds, you can leave the room now. It's time for everyone else to hang out. Like, I get that they want to try to explain that away, but that really seems like a stretch to me. I'm sure somebody got, like, that was their dissertation or something on, like, the origin of Bloody Mary and the psychological effects on young women and going through puberty. I'm sure that that was somebody's big brouhaha, like, that was somebody's big, like, moment to come up with this theory, but I don't really think it holds water. Now, to be fair, I don't know much about women's period. Actually, that's not true. I did have to take take a class in college, and we discussed the history of menstruation, but I, I, it just doesn't wash for me. It just doesn't, that theory doesn't watch for me. It seems like they're overreaching it. I think that it is. Kids don't like bathrooms anyways. It's the one room in the house where you, I mean, you kind of have a love-hate relationship with bathrooms because it's the one room in the house where you kind of have a little bit of peace and quiet. But it's also the one room in the house where you are always alone and it's always lit differently than the rest of the house. It's generally a little bit cleaner than the rest of the house, in my experience at least. It is has a different, it doesn't, a a bathroom seems removed from the house. And I think as, as an adult, you kind of, you kind of get it. You kind of get that it is a different room. It doesn't have all the carpeting and all of the same comforts that every other room has. But as a kid, it seems like an alien room. It seems like a room that is simply there as opposed to everything else in your house has kind of warm and comfy and stuff like that. And bathrooms are very cold and sterile. And I think that's the reason why it takes place in the bathroom is because it is an alien environment to everything else you're pretty much used to. It's also really hard to keep warm in there. Like there's just a lot of factors that make bathrooms kind of creepy, but the the lighting is always really stark too. There's usually one light. You shut it off, you're in pitch black. When you're in other rooms, you can shut a light off. There's light coming from the hallway and things like that. So this is the question really. Oh, and let me tell this real quick here. I do want to say this here real quick, and then I'll wrap it up, because the episode's running a little bit long. But The story of Bloody Mary, as far as I know, is mostly based in the United States. However, other countries have their own versions of it. And the one I found that was really fascinating was they have one in Japan. Now, of course, Japan has to be weirder than everybody. Japan has Hanako-san, or Tori no Hakosan, which means Hanako of the Toilet. The last place you want to be trapped as a ghost is in a bathroom. I covered a couple episodes back, there was the ghost of a little boy trapped in a women's Burger King bathroom. I've actually discovered many more ghosts trapped in bathrooms. We'll be covering those later. But not only is this ghost trapped in the bathroom, her name, like we have Bloody Mary, they have Hanako of the Toilet. It's in your name that's gross. Anyways, briefly, she was either killed in a World War II air raid, tragic, or just murdered. Just murdered by a psychopath. I mean, that's equally tragic, but it doesn't have that historical importance. If you go onto the, if you go into a school or a office building or something like that, you go to the third floor and then go to the third stall in a girl's bathroom. You knock three times and say, "They'll say, are you Hanako-san?" And then you hear a voice go, "I'm here." And then you open the door and there's a little girl in a red dress, or See, even they have variations in their legend, which I always think is interesting. And it's really based on which province, which area of Japan you're hearing the story from. Either you open the door, there's a little girl in a red dress sitting on a toilet, which would be terrifying. Or, so that happens, or a bloody handprint will appear on the door. <gasps> I, that, I would much prefer that versus a girl, a little ghost girl sitting on a toilet. Or a white hand will reach out from underneath the stall and grab you. Ugh. That's creepy. Or you open the door and there's a three-headed lizard that eats you. Out of those, I would much prefer uh, anything but the white hand. That to me seems... The white hand and the little girl sitting there seem the creepiest. The three-headed lizard ate me. At least I'd be like, this is a death that maybe only eight other people on the planet will have, I am honored to be your food. Like, I could, I would be fine with that versus the other two horrifying images. But here's, here's, here's why you stuck around with me so long ranting about urban legend. Is Bloody Mary real? I think she can be. In the sense, and we've talked about things like hypersigils before where belief can create reality. We've talked about tulpas recently. I am a long time ago. I made a reference to something called a Igor or an 
Ergor, where it's a thought form that is created by mass consciousness. I honestly believe that so many people believe in Bloody Mary that she can be real. That if she wasn't, if, if there wasn't a vengeful spirit living in a bathroom mirror before 1950, there most likely is one now. Bloody Mary is the queen of ghosts. Bloody Mary is the first ghost story most people hear, and they fear her all their life. And then maybe they played the game when they were kids, and they heard something after they did the ritual. They heard a knock or something fell over, or they saw some distortion in the mirror. Which actually, if you stare at a mirror long enough, and this is the science part, real science, if you stare at a mirror long enough, you your brain will start to try to make patterns and detect movement where there is none. And you will see your own face start to sh- uh, shape shift. Your eyes will get big, your mouth will move, you'll look monstrous. That is a... At least science says that is a visual trick that is easily replicated, either in no light or very, very low light. If you stare at something long enough, you will start to see it move and distend and things like that. And they say it's very easy. It's totally easy to explain. You can replicate it. Bloody Mary or not, look at your reflection in dark room. You will see your face start to move. It's a known principle. It's basically the equivalent of seeing uh, shapes and clouds. Or, actually, maybe you're probably seeing a ghost. But, you know, the the point is, my point is this, is that you're an adult, you believed it when you were a kid, and maybe you tried it, maybe you didn't. Maybe you heard kids who tried it, and yeah, and then I saw Bloody Mary standing behind me and I ran out of the bathroom, and that fear sits on you, and you go, I'm never going to do it. Maybe you did it, and you saw something behind you. You had a bit of that trick of the light, and you ran out of the room crying. Or maybe you didn't, and you didn't see anything. And you think, it doesn't exist. She's not real. But you continue to, no matter what, as a child, you continue to hear stories of Bloody Mary throughout your childhood. And then you end up having kids. And one day, your kids are talking about Bloody Mary. Like, no, I don't want to do that. And you're like, what are you talking about? And they're like, Bloody, my big brother, trying to, he's trying to make me do Bloody Mary, but I don't want to do Bloody Mary. And you're trying to like get this fight resolved between your two idiot children who trying to force each other into a dark bathroom. And you're mad because this is a stupid argument, but in the back of your head, you remember that fear. And it lives and it lives on. And it is something that is so universal that you can say, if you tell somebody, if you mention Bloody Mary to some people, and they may go, <laughs> yeah, the cocktail, but in the back of their mind, they have that vision of that young girl standing in that mirror. I don't care. It's one of those things that is completely universal. And I think there is so much focus and so much belief and more importantly, so much fear in this entity. It exists. And if it doesn't in the sense of quote unquote, bloody Mary, Mary worth disfigured face or whatever legend you have, any demon or ghost worth its salt they hate salt but any demon or ghost worth its not salt alternative would assume that form because they know how much people fear it if she didn't exist before the 1950s if she didn't exist if the story's not true and it's probably not it probably started off as an urban legend but now Today, she is or something else is ready for you to say those words or to eat that apple in a dark bathroom. And if you don't believe me, try it yourself tonight. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.